shall examine a few problems in each one of these books. Book one. In book one, we will learn how to factor x squared plus 3x plus 2. The language I just used means absolutely nothing to a youngster. I just as well had written Chinese. x squared plus 3x plus 2 has no significance. Before we try to learn how to factor x squared plus 3x plus 2, let's look at something that is more familiar. Let's look at the number 6. We will learn how to factor the number 6. Let's look at that amount. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We have 6. Now we are going to factor 6. We cannot do something that we don't understand. A child can jump because a child knows what jumping is. A child can sing because a child knows what singing is. A child can dance because a child knows what to dance means. To jump, to sing, to skip, to eat. Those are doing words which the child understands. Two factor. We must have a definition of two factor. Two factor means to build a rectangle. We must build a rectangle out of six. If the child doesn't understand the word rectangle, we are still right where we started from. We must describe a rectangle. Give a definition of a rectangle. A rectangle is a box with four corners. We must build a box out of six. We will take our six units and build a box out of six. Did we build a box out of six? Yes, we did. Two factor. We did the do word. We did factor. We did build a rectangle. Now, we must find the factors. Factors is a word that is a noun. It describes something. The factors are the dimensions of our rectangle or the over amount and the up amount. The over amount is 1, 2. The up amount is 1, 2, 3. We will write down our factors. Our over amount, we draw a narrow over, is 1, 2. Our up amount is 1, two, three. We factored six and we recorded the factors. Again, what is factoring? Factoring is building a rectangle. Here we build a rectangle using six. Our distance over is one, two, we recorded our distance over 2. We have an arrow over for 2. Our distance up is 3. Let's look at another amount. Let's look at 8. We'll write the amount down. 8. And then count it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, eight. Let's factor eight. What is factoring? Factoring is building a rectangle. First of all, let's see if we can build a rectangle that is one wide.
Yes, we can build a rectangle that is one wide. So the factors of eight are our distance over one, and our distance up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The factors of eight are one and eight. Let's see if we can build a rectangle out of eight that is two over. Yes, we can build a rectangle out of eight that is two over. What are the factors of eight now? The factors of eight are over two and up four. Over two, one, two, and up one, two, three, four. Up four. Let's look at another amount. Let's look at 12. We'll write down the amount 12 and count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's factor 12. What is factoring? Factoring is building a rectangle. Let's see if we can build a rectangle that is one wide or one over. Here we are one wide. We will discover that we can always build a rectangle one wide, regardless of the amount. Our factors of 12 here are our over distance, one, our up distance, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's see if we can build a rectangle using 12 that is too wide. Yes, we can. We can build a rectangle using 12 that is too wide. Here again, we factored 12. What are the factors of 12 now? The factors are distance over, two, one, two, and our distance up, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if we can factor 12 again. Let's see if we can factor 12. What is factoring again? Factoring is building a rectangle. Let's see if we can build a rectangle that is three over. Yes, we built a rectangle that is over three. What are our factors? Our factors are our distance over. Our distance over is three and our distance up, which is one, two, three, four. Let's look at the number four. Here we can see that we can factor four. We can build a rectangle that is over one and the factors are one over four up. We can also 
factor for this way. What are our factors? Our factors are over 2, up 2. Notice here we have a special rectangle. Here we have a rectangle and both sides are equal. A rectangle whose sides are equal is called a square. Here we have a square. We name this square by the length of its side. The length of the side is 2. The length of this side is 2. The length of this side is 2. The length of this side is 2. The over and the up distance are both 2. We name this square 2 square because the side is 2. Let's look at a new amount. Let's look at the amount 9. We will write the amount down, 9, and count it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We know that we can factor 9 over 1 and up 9. Let's see if we can factor it over 2. No, we can't factor it over 2. Let's see if we can factor it over 3. Yes, we can. And notice, our factors are over 3, up 3. Over 3, up 3. Notice our over distance and up distance are the same. We have a square. What is the name of the square? 3 square. How do we write 3 square? We write 3 with a little 2 at the top. The 2 tells us that the over distance and the up distance, or two directions, are the same. If I were to ask you how much this amount is, it would be very easy to answer because all we would have to do is count how many units we must go up. One, two, three, four. Let's look at another bar. Another bar that is one wide and you tell me how much we have here. Well, it's very easy, isn't it? All we have to do is count one, two, three, four, five. We just have to count how long the bar is. Can you tell me how long this bar is? That's also easy, isn't it? All I have to do is count how long the bar is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to look at another bar now. Can you tell me how long that bar is? You might be able to guess, and everybody could make a guess. Someone might guess six, someone seven, someone eight. We might get lots of guesses. And one of the guesses might even be right. But we really don't know how long that bar is unless we measured it. If we measured it, we might be able to find out how long it is. But the mathematician has never been noted for being exceptionally ambitious, only very clever. And the mathematician is always the first one to admit that I don't know how long it is. How much is this? How long is it? The mathematician will look at it and he'll say, I don't know. I don't know how long that is. I can't count it. Now, the mathematician uses the word, I don't know, so much that he gives that word, I don't know, 
a special name. He calls it X. This is X, which means what? I don't know how much it is. I can't count it. Here we can see we have one, two, three, four. We can count it. One, two, three, four, five. We can count it. This we cannot count. This is X. It's one wide, but how long is it? We cannot say. Okay. We are starting to learn names of things. We know what the name of this is. This is one little unit, which is one over and one up. We know what the name of this is. This is X. It's one over and I don't know up. So we just call it X. We've learned how to name lots of things. We've learned how to name our square here. The name of our square here is two squared. It's a square and each side is two. Let's learn how to name something more. Let's look at our big square here. Can we name the square? In order to count the name the square, we must count the length of its side. But we don't have any divisions. We don't have any little lines showing us where a unit starts and where a unit ends like we do here or like we do in our square right here. Here again, we could only guess. Looking at it, we must say that it is how long? Well, let's look. It is X long. It is the same length as our X. It's the same distance over as X. It's the same distance up as X. So now we can name it. It is X both ways or X squared. At the beginning, we decided that we were going to learn how to factor X squared plus 3X plus Two. A problem that even a child can do. The problem, however, in doing the factoring was not the complexity of the mathematics. It was the language barrier. Now we are at a point where we no longer have a language barrier. X both ways means X squared. Here this means something now that we can see. We have X squared. Here we have three X's. We can count out three X's. One, two, three. And we can count out two units. Good preparation before we actually start factoring is reading expressions and getting the amounts out. For example, if we had x squared plus 5x plus 6 written there instead, we would get out an x squared, we would get out 5x's, and we would get 6 units. Preparation in reading the expression and getting the amount out is good practice before we actually start factoring. But now let's factor the amount x squared plus 3x plus 2. Does everyone know what factoring is? Factoring is building a rectangle. That's correct. Factoring is building a rectangle. We must take this amount right here and arrange it into a rectangle. We must build a box out of it. I'm going to show you how you can always get a rectangle out of an amount using x squares, x's, and units. You can always build a rectangle by placing one x on the side and the rest of the x's 
on the top. Notice we've allowed a little place in the corner where the units will fit. Did we factor the amount? Yes, we did. Because what is factoring? Factoring is building a rectangle, and that is what we did. Now we will record the factors. Remember, we have an over distance and an up distance. Our distance over is from here to here is how much? From here to here is, I don't know, I can't count it. From here to here is, I don't know, is x. x plus one more is our distance over. x plus one. Our distance up is what? x plus one, two. x plus two. We have just learned how to factor an algebraic expression and we just did it. Now that we know how to factor, let's try another problem. Let's try this problem here. x squared plus 7x plus 6. The first thing we must do is get out the amount x squared. plus 7x, 7x's. Now notice, the only prerequisite once we have gotten past the language barrier is the ability to count. In the last problem, the prerequisite was the ability to count to three. Here, the prerequisite is the ability to count to seven. We've got an x squared, we've got seven x's, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven x's, and six units. One, two, three, four, five, six units. What is factoring again? What is the definition of factoring? Factoring is building a rectangle. We must take this amount and build a rectangle. How can we always get a rectangle out of this amount? We can always build a rectangle by doing what? By placing how many on the side? By placing one on the side and putting the rest on the top. So that we have a space in the corner for our units. Sure enough. we were able to factor the amount. Our distance over is x plus one, x plus one. Our distance up is what? x plus one, two, three, four, five, six. x plus six. Okay, that seems to be very easy. Let's try another amount. Let's see if we have really got it down. Let's factor x squared plus 5x plus 6. Let's get out the amount. x squared plus 5x plus six units. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here again, what is factoring? Factoring is building a rectangle. How can we factor it and always get the right amount? Well, we have learned to always put one x on the side and the rest on the top. 
and place the units in the corner. But we have a problem here. There are two units that don't fit into the corner. I guess it doesn't always work with one on the side, does it? Well, if it doesn't work with one on the side, how many would you suggest that we try on the side? If it doesn't work with one, try two. So we will try two on the side. It works with two on the side. Now, if it hadn't worked with two on the side, how many do you suggest we try three? If it doesn't work with one, try two. If it doesn't work with two, try three. Notice what we are learning. We are learning the process of elimination. If it doesn't work with the first possibility, try the next possibilities until we have exhausted all of our possibilities. Let's read our factors. Our distance over is x plus 2. x plus 2 is our distance over. x plus 1, 2, 3 is our distance up. x plus 3 is our distance up. Let's try one more problem. Let's try the problem x squared plus 6x plus 8. x squared plus 6x plus 8. Factoring is what? Building a rectangle. First of all, we will try how many on the side? We will try one on the side, and the rest above. Notice, we can count one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work with one on the side, so we will try how many on the side? Two. And here we get it to work. We have built a rectangle. What are our dimensions? X plus two, distance over, x plus 2 over, distance up, x plus 4. x plus 1, 2, 3, 4 is our distance up. One more problem. Why, this isn't difficult at all, is it? We understand the language. x squared plus 7, x plus 12. We know how to get out the amount x squared, 7x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 12 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Factoring is what? Building a rectangle. We will try how many on the side? One. And the rest on the top. Now notice, at this point, the child should start to make quantitative judgments. 
the child should be able to start making the decision before trying to place the units in the corner whether or not this amount here will actually fit in the corner there. In fact, we could actually count before we tried it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Only six will fit in there. It's obvious that six will not be adequate. We now place how many on the side? If it doesn't work with one on the side, we try two. Here we place our units in the corner. And here again, the units will not fit in the corner. If it doesn't work with two on the side, we will try three. This time, it works. Our distance over is x plus 3. x plus 3. Our distance up is x plus 1, 2, 3, 4. x plus Four. We shall now examine book two. In book one, we were allowed to count our x's and our units out individually. We would get out our x square, count out the number of x's we needed, we would then count out the number of units we needed, and we would build our rectangle. In book two, we are no longer allowed to use individual x's. In book two, we must use multiples of x. Here you can see that we can get x's in multiples of 2x's, 3x's, 4x's, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 9x's. Let's look at a problem in book 2 and see how this is done. We are still allowed to count out our units individually. We will look at the problem x squared plus 6x plus 8. We will get out our x square. We will also get out our 8 units. We are not allowed to count out our x's, so we will pass the x's by for now and count out 8 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now we learned to factor that we would always try how many x's on the side? First of all, we would try 1x on the side and place the rest on the top. The child must place the rest of the x's on the top. Of his six x's, he has used one. Does the child how know how many more need to go on top? No, he hasn't learned his addition facts yet. So, he must come over and try to find the correct amount of x's to place on the top. Let's suppose the child got the wrong amount of x's to place on the top. Well, first of all, he wants to check to make sure that he's got six x's. One, two, three, four, five. No, one and four was not correct. That gave him a total of five x's. Did the child waste his time by getting the wrong amount? No, the child is learning addition facts. The child is learning that one and four makes five, not six. This time, the child gets one, two, three, four, five x's. 
Does that make six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, one and five make six. First of all, we tried one on the side and five on top. We place our units in the corner and they don't all fit. If they don't all fit, we must try not one on the side, but how many on the side? Two. We will get our multiple of two x's on the side. Now we must figure out two plus how much more makes six. The child may be counting on his fingers, two, three, four, five, six, that is fine. Or he may be counting the bars up here, two, three, four, five, six. Or he may just guess, try to get the one, but the child will eventually discover by checking that two and four makes six. In fact, the child might even get out the six and place them here so that he can place the two amounts together to see if they add up to six. The child tries two on the side, four on the top, and places the units in the corner. What is the child learning by doing this? The child doesn't even know he is learning his addition facts, but indeed he is learning his addition facts. We have now factored the problem. Our factors are x plus 2 over x plus 2 over x plus 4 up. We will look at another problem. Let's factor this amount, x squared plus 8x plus 15. We will get out our amount. First of all, we will get out x squared. And then we will get out what? Our units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We will place how many x's on the side? Always one. One and how much more makes eight? We will place our eight bars of x's right here below our one bar of x and we can see that it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more. One and seven make eight. At this point, we will no longer place our units in the corner without determining whether or not they will fit. Here we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fifteen will not fit in the corner, so we just as well not try. Only seven will fit in the corner. Since it doesn't work with one x on the side, we will try how many x's on the side? That's right. We will try two x's on the side. Two x's and how many more x's make eight x's? Two and how much more makes eight? Two and this much more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two and six makes eight. We place our sixth at the top. Now notice, we are not going to place our x's in the corner until we determine whether or not they will fit. At this point, we have been practicing our skip counting and we will skip count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 2, 
4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 15 will not fit in the corner. If it doesn't work with two X's on the side, how many X's will we try on the side? That's right. We will try three X's on the side. Three and how much more makes eight? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Three and one, two, three, four, five more makes eight. So we will place how many above? Five. Three and five makes eight. Here again, we will skip count before we place the units in the corner. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Yes, it works with three on the side. We can now place our units in the corner. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. And notice. At this point, it would no longer be necessary to place the 15 individual units in the corner because we could now see that 3 by 5 equals 15 and we could get our rectangle that is named 3 by 5 and place it in the corner. This is a very important step. Once we have discovered that we can use our whole rectangle, we will no longer use the individual units. Once we have started to use the solid rectangles, it's very important that we spend a lot of time using these in games and other exercises, it is important that we spend more time dealing with these blocks than we spend within the books themselves. Our objective, of course, is to learn how to skip count effectively. Here we have two. Here we will learn how to count this rectangle by twos, two, four. Here we will learn how to count this one, two, four, six. 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And notice with this piece, we can do all of our skip counting. And here we can recognize that if this is 16, then this is just two more, which is 18. Here we recognize that if we know the one preceding, all we have to do is add two to the next. There are lots of games and exercises that the kids love to play and the thing that is exciting about the program is the children aren't even aware that they're memorizing their multiplication facts. Our multiplication facts are the greatest milestone in mastering mathematics. There is no concept that we will consider in this program that even a child can't understand. Our biggest objective, our biggest milestone to achieve is to help the child master his times tables from his one times tables to his nine times tables. I call this a milestone because it should take 
at least six months for the child to totally internalize and memorize his times tables without experiencing anxiety or frustration. And the child can do this easily by the time he or she is six years of age. Here we can see our multiples of three. Three, three, six, three, six, nine, three, six, nine, twelve, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, twenty seven. It is important that the child learn to skip count by threes up to 27. There are many, many games and many activities that the child can be involved in that will allow him to do this over a period of time. Once the child has these facts, they are his forever. A lot of ways that this can be done is playing games with the children. For example, the children can be sitting in a circle and clapping their hands in unison in rhythm, such as this. The teacher then will skip count. Three, six, nine, Johnny. Johnny repeats without skipping a beat. Three, Six, nine, Susie. Three, six, nine, Johnny. Three, six, nine, and the teacher back. Three, six, nine, twelve. It is important that the child experience his multiplication facts by every mode, visual, sound, and lots of practice. You can teach the multiplication facts by using the material where the children are both looking at the material and perhaps reciting a simple rhyme. Observe. One child is manipulating the blocks. The rest are reciting the rhyme. Three, six, nine, twelve. Put some more on the shelf. Fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four. Give me twenty-seven more. Okay, let's try that again. Now it's another child's turn. Three, six, nine, twelve. Put some more on the shelf. Fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four. Give me twenty-seven more. You can play musical chairs where the children are having a good time, and they're not even aware that they're learning their multiplication facts. The music is playing and the children are hearing. Three, six, nine, twelve. And now they must sit down during, put some more on the shelf. And the children stand up and are walking around the chairs. Fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, 24, give me 27 more. And the children sit down. A child has a very short attention span. The attention span is developed gradually. Our objective in working with the children is to lengthen the attention span gradually 
as the child grows without the child experiencing anxiety and frustration. The thing that is the most important to recognize is that memorization of the multiplication facts is the greatest milestone in achieving a mastery of mathematics. As you continue to study Mortensen math, you will discover that there is not a problem that requires a single fact more difficult than nine times nine. There is not a single concept in mathematics that cannot be comprehended by even a child. Mathematics is one of those areas in which we can grow and experience tremendous gratification in our own abilities being expanded without experiencing frustration and anxiety. If we do experience the frustration and anxiety, it is because of communication problems. What we are trying to do with this program is make math a study that can be communicated even to a child. Let's go back and do another problem in book two. Let's look at this problem, x squared plus 12x plus 35. Now notice, once we start getting in these higher numbers, it would become very tedious for anyone to do the problem if we had to count out 35 units. Why, it would take us a very long time to count out the 35 units and we would have a very good chance of making an error. At this point, we no longer count out the individual units. We have learned how to use the units that make our rectangles. Now, as you remember, in book two, we will get out our x square, but we are no longer allowed to count out our individual x's, so we come and we get our 35 units. But this time, we must find the rectangle that makes 35, or the rectangle that contains 35 units. The first place we would look for our 35 units would be in our multiples of 1. But we can look at our multiples of 1 and see that we only get 9 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 is the most. So we would try our 2's. And here we would skip count by our 2's. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. No, the highest amount we can get in 2's is 18. We will look in our multiples of 3. And here we can see that our highest amount is 27. We don't find it in our fours. And in our fives, we finally find it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. We have found our rectangle that contains 35. At this point, it is extremely important to recognize the milestone of learning the times tables, of playing lots of games where the child plays memory games, matching games, and the child knows 35. The child knows 35 is that rectangle that is over 5 and up 7, or 35 is 5 times 7. We have now gotten our x square, and we've gotten our rectangle containing 35 units. In this particular case, there is only one rectangle in the materials, or even in
are rectangles that contain 35 units. We will place our 35 units in the corner. Now it is obvious how many X's must go to the side. One, two, three, four, five. Five X's belong on the side. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven on the top. Our question is, do five and seven add up to 12? Yes, they do. We have factored the problem. Let's look again how simple it is to factor the problem once we know how to find our rectangle containing 35 units. Once we have found the rectangle containing the 35 units, we have solved the problem. This rectangle tells us everything. It tells us how far over we must go, it tells us how far up we must go. Now, all we need to do is record our factors. Our distance over is x plus 5 x plus 5. Our distance up is x plus 7. x plus 7. x plus 5. x plus 7. We shall do one final problem in book two. Let's factor this expression, x squared plus 9x plus 18. The first amount we get out is, correct, x squared. The second amount we get out is our 18 units. We must find the rectangle that contains 18 units. The first place we will look for that rectangle is in our multiples of 1. It is not there. We will then look for it in our multiples of 2. Yes, here we found 18 in our multiples of 2. It is now obvious how many x's we must place on the side. We must place two x's on the side and we must place nine x's above. However, does two and nine equal nine? No. Two and nine equals eleven. Eleven. We are only allowed to use nine x's. It is obvious that this rectangle of 18 is not the correct rectangle. Is there another rectangle of 18? Well, let's look in our multiples of 3. Yes, in our multiples of 3, we found a rectangle containing 18 units. Here again, it's obvious how many rectangles must be placed to the side of our x. And it is obvious how many must be placed above. We can see that three rectangles must be placed to the side, and we can see that six must be placed at the top. And we also can see that three plus six does equal Nine. Much more important than factoring is the fact that we are achieving our major 
milestones in mastering mathematics. The first most major milestone, foremost milestone in mathematics, memorization of the times tables. Another milestone is addition facts. But let me emphasize, the greatest thing we can accomplish in our math education with youngsters is a mastery of our multiplication facts. Our factors are, if we will read the distance over, x plus 3, and let me point out, we should recognize that our factors can be read from any point reading the distance across. Here our distance across is also x plus 3. Or if we read it in the middle, our distance across is x plus 3. x plus 3, our distance over, our distance up is x plus 6. We have completed our examination of book two, but before we move on to book three, it is important to recognize the significance of what we are achieving in these first two books. Much more important than the fact that we are doing algebra is the fact that we are learning our multiplication facts and our addition facts, and much more important than the fact that we are doing algebra, is what we are learning about the rectangle itself, the significance of the rectangle and all of mathematics. We will now look at book three. In book three, we are going to learn a new concept. We are going to learn how to multiply. As we discussed before, a child can skip, jump, sing, because a child knows what those doing words or what those verbs mean. But a child cannot multiply unless he has a definition of what to multiply means. We must have a definition of multiplying. What is multiplying? Multiplying is building a rectangle. In book three, we will do the following multiplication problem. What we are looking at is something that we are very familiar with, two factors, an over distance and an up distance. Remember, multiplication is building a rectangle. So in order to build a rectangle, all we need is our over distance and our up distance, or our factors. Let's outline our factors here. Here we must be over x plus 2. We will be over x plus two units and our up distance will be x plus three units. We can now see that over x and up x creates an area of x squared. We now must come over two. We will extend our square over two and 
we will extend our square up three units. We bring the entire square up three units, and now all we have to do is fill in our corner, and we have a complete rectangle. We place in our units, the rectangle two by three, and we now have our rectangle. We just did a multiplication problem. We built a rectangle. What did we start with? We started with our factors. We started with our dimensions. Factoring was also what? Factoring is building a rectangle. In factoring, we started with our amount and found our dimensions. And let me point out, in mathematics, there are only two things that we are focusing on, amount and direction. In our very first three books, we are starting to really gain a grasp of what mathematics is all about. Now we must record how much we have or the amount that we have. Here we can see that we have x squared. x squared. Here we can see how many x's we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, five x's. And here we have six units. Let me write this below a little larger and possibly clear. x squared plus 5x, x squared plus 5x plus 6 units. After our first two pages in book three, the rest of our problems will look like this. Here we see we have two factors, our over factor x plus 2 and our up factor x plus 4. Here again we could outline it or we can just recognize that if we go over x and we go up x, we will have an x squared. Over x and up x, the two dimensions give us an outline for an x square. And we can connect the over and the up, the first over and up, which will show us our first piece or our x square. Now in all our multiplications from here on out, we will always be doing the same thing. We will always be building a rectangle. We will always get our first piece, and then we will come over the amount we must come over. We must come over two units. I must extend the entire amount over two units. I extended the distance of the entire amount over two. I am already up x by getting my first piece, so I must now extend my dis distance up 4. I can extend the distance up 4 by placing the 4x bars above. Now all I have to do is fill in the corner, which requires the rectangle 2 by 4. Notice, my rectangle is made up of four rectangles. And I will shift it so we can see the four rectangles. And here we have the representations of the four rectangles. Here we have this rectangle, which contains eight units. And notice again, we are doing what? Learning our multiplication facts. Two by four is eight. Here we have four x's in this rectangle. Here we have two, rectangle, two x's in this rectangle, 
And here we have x squared in this rectangle. Our total number of units is 8. Our total number of x's is 4 plus 2, or 6 x's, 6 x's, and we have 1 x squared. At this point, doing the problems becomes a very easy matter if we are gaining more and more efficiency with our multiplication facts. The addition facts will not slow us down so much because it is easy to add a small amount to a larger amount. But as we move along, it would take us forever if we had to stop and count every individual unit. We must be able to skip count those amounts, count by eights, eight, 16, 24, etc., and then eventually just know that eight, nine times is 72. An important thing that we can do to help learn these times tables is doing lots of memory, memory games and matching games where we have our 72 on the back and the kids can play games and memorize those facts. Book four. Book four contains the very same type of problems as book three. The only difference is that the problems may be slightly larger. Our objective here again is mastering our multiplication facts, our number one milestone in achieving competence in mathematics and also addition facts. We will now look at some problems in book four. Let's do the multiplication problem. X plus eight over by X plus four up, or X plus eight times X plus four. What must we do? We must build a rectangle. We must be over x plus 4, up x plus 8. We will identify our first piece over x, up x. Over x, up x, of course, is x squared. Now we must extend our first piece over 8 units, the entire amount over 8 units. We must extend our rectangle up four units. Now we must fill in the corner. We must place the rectangle in the corner that is over eight and up four. Here we can see that our rectangle is made of four rectangles. Our units contain how many units? Notice our multiplication facts. Eight, four times. Eight, once, two, three, four times. We will either know that eight, four times is 32, or we can skip count. Eight, 16, 24, 32. We will record 32. We will record the number of x's we have. We have four x's. In this rectangle, we have eight x's. Eight x's. And this rectangle is x squared. Totally we have 32, 32, 
units, 12 X's, 12 X's, let's make that a little clearer, 12 X's, and here we have X squared. What are we achieving? That is much more important than the fact that we're doing algebra. We are learning multiplication facts, we are learning addition facts, and we are learning about the significance of the rectangle. We will now consider our final book in Algebra Level 1, Book 5. The problems in Book 5 are similar to Book 3 and Book 4. Here again, we are experiencing more practice and gaining a better grasp of our addition facts and our multiplication facts. Before we look at a problem in Book 5, let me speak somewhat about the significance and the psychology of the little books. Each little book contains 20 pages. The problems on page 1 are exactly the same type as 2, 3, 4, up through page 20. We learn the concept and then we practice. Besides the fact that we are gaining a greater understanding of the concepts we were studying, we are also achieving skills in addition and multiplication, and we are acquiring a mastery of our multiplication facts and addition facts. The child starts in a book, and before you know it, he has done a few pages. The next thing you know, the child recognizes, hey, look, I'm almost half done with the whole book. The child is extremely motivated to complete the book. He gains a feeling of pride, a feeling of accomplishment, a feeling of self-worth. Using Mortensen Math Manipulators to make the math understandable and easy. I hope you enjoyed this little introduction, and thank you for your time.